So I've got a question here involving data that's been given in a grouped table, and it's asking us to interpret this information. So we've got to write down the modal class. Well, that word modal, it is associated with the most often, the highest frequency. So we look at um, the table, and it's telling us that the highest frequency was 21. So that's telling us that uh, 21 days, the temperature was between those. So this was the modal class interval. Now remember, an interval is from the beginning to the end of the group. So we write down the whole of that. So 20 T less than or equal to 24. So the temperatures were greater than 20, but less than or equal to 24 degrees C. And that will be the modal class, because it happened the most often. Um, the next part of the question says calculate an estimate of the mean temperature. Well, again, we should remember formulas. So the mean is given as the sum of the xfs divided by the sum of the fs when we're dealing with grouped data. And the idea here is that the top of this um, fraction is going to calculate the total number of uh, degrees C for all the days. And then we're going to divide by the sum of the frequencies, which is this all the days. So it's like the classic definition of the mean, the total of uh, all numbers divided by the number of numbers we gave you that total. But in terms of an estimate for mean, when it's a grouped table, then we have the classic scenario of adding on the extra column which is going to be the XF column. Now, in this case, because it's grouped data, we need to use the midpoint. So because it's grouped data, we use the midpoint of the interval for X. So it's telling us to use the midpoint of the interval times the frequency. So the midpoint of 8 and 12, add the two numbers up is 20, half it is 10. So this one we're going to be doing 10 times 6, which is 60. And the middle of this group, 12 to 16 is 28, half it is 14. So we're going to be doing 14 times 8, um, 80, 112. And the next group we're going to be doing 18 times 13. So 18 times 10, 180, 318 is 54. So that's going to be 234. Uh, middle of that group, 22, times by 21. So 22 20s is 440. Um, plus another 22 is 262, and then we've got to do the middle of this group, which is 26. So 26 times 2 is equal to 52. Um, because it's a calculator paper, we don't uh, rely on our mental maths um, all the time, so we do the checks of the important ones. So 14 times 8, 112, yeah. 18 times 13, um, 234, yeah. 22 times 21, uh, 462. So again, Important to check. I made a mistake there. Didn't write down the four. So 22 times 21, 462, and 26 times 2 is 52. Um, the formula is telling us to take the total of all the XFs. So we need to get our total there. So we've got to add up. So 60 plus 112 plus 234 plus 462 plus 52 equals so 7,258. Um, and that's the total of all the temperatures. And the table told us in the information here that we were talking about 50 days, but we should add that up and just check it. So, and that's going to be the sum of the Fs, the total of the frequencies. And this is going to be the total of our XFs, uh, the midpoint times the frequency. Um, so the mean is going to equal, now uh, that's a symbol that uh, we use for the mean. Um, so the mean is going to be equal to 7,258 divided by 50. So 7,258 divided by 50 equals 145.16. So here, 145.16. Leave the decimal um, because uh, averages to compare, we do uh, use the decimals. So 145. Now we can look at that answer and then we can look at our temperatures. And we can see that uh, something's not quite right here because this answer is way over any of the temperatures here. So something's been done wrong. So let's have a look. Um, 10 times 6, 14 times 8, 18 times 13, uh, 22 times 21, 26 times 2. So when we add those up, 
we can see that it was nowhere near 7,000. So obviously did something wrong in the adding. So 60 plus 112 plus 234 plus 462 plus 52 equals 920. So that should be 920. Obviously this is a really useful learned error to make because it's highlighting the fact that we should check the reasonableness of our answers. To get an answer of 145 here, none of these temperatures were anywhere near that, so therefore the answer cannot be as high as that. Um, the highest temperature it could have been was 28, the lowest it could have been was 8. So now we can do a recheck. And so we've got 920 divided by 50 equals 18.4. Uh, so 18.4. Now that seems more reasonable because it does fit uh, within the uh, table of data, and because this table's um, got around the middle here, it's 25. So we'd expect the mean average to be around there somewhere. There's uh, no really uh, big numbers uh, up here. There's no really small numbers down there. So it would be around the middle area. So 18.4 gives us confidence that it's going to be right. So a valuable uh, thing about checking and asking yourself is the answer you're going to write reasonable. Uh, 145.16 was nowhere near reasonable. So doing that checking, we can see that adding those up, nowhere was it going to be near 7,000. So a simple error there and corrected. The question goes on to talk about um, drawing a frequency polygon for the information in the table. So what we need to remember about a frequency polygon is that we use the middle of the intervals plotted against the frequencies. And the word polygon implies that we're going to be drawing something that has straight lines. And we're using the midpoint. So we plot the midpoint versus the frequency. So that's what we do for a frequency polygon. Um, so if we take the table of data then, then the midpoint was 10 against 6, so 10, and we work out the scale, it's always really important to think about the scale. So here we can see that 2 squares equals 1. So if I want to do 6 as a frequency, then 5, 6, plot across. And the next one, the interval midpoint was 14, and it goes up to 8. So eight and then the next interval uh, midpoint was 18 and that goes up to 13 and the next one was 22 and that goes up to 21 and the next one um, we had the mid interval is between 24 and 28 which was 26 and that goes up to 2 so 26 goes up to 2 so 1 2 and um, because it's a frequency polygon, then we join all the uh, plotted frequencies with straight lines. Being careful for accuracy, uh, we use our ruler and join up the points. And there we have a frequency polygon. Uh, polygon again, straight sides. Frequency is plotted um, against the midpoint of the interval. So we use the midpoint of the interval versus the frequency. So an example of how to plot a frequency polygon.